One of history's great ironies is how much the democratic countries and the communist countries don't like each other, because to my point of view, they're siblings. They're both born from revolution and essentially are trying to empower the peasantry and dismantle uh, the old class system. You know, you disempower the religious sect and you dethrone the nobles and then you put the peasants in command. And obviously, these two political uh, philosophies have uh, very different ways of trying to approach this. And uh, they have other similarities. I mean, also, they're both laser focused on the economy as being like one of the most important things uh, to, to the functioning of society and all that kind of stuff. And so in many ways, I feel that they don't get along and they rub up against each other in the way they do in a negative fashion because they are too similar to each other and they're kind of trying to occupy the same niche. Whereas if they were more radically different from each other, they would be able to cohabitate better because they're, they're not competing for the same thing. But uh, unfortunately, uh, we didn't uh, really complete uh, our historical effort to dismantle the old class system that used to you know, run everything, the feudal system. Uh, I mean, yeah, we disempowered the nobles. Uh, we, we took the fangs out of religious institutions. And, you know, we've given everyone the right to vote and all that kind of stuff to empower the peasantry and anyone can run for office, air quotes, and so on and so forth. And yet, uh, something's wrong. Somehow, we keep finding ourselves sliding back towards the feudal model. The merchant trade class... Which emerged out of old sailing pirates. Well, they've become the new aristocracy. And as time goes on and more and more generations pass where wealth is contained within a bloodline again, the more and more they begin to think of themselves as a proper old-fashioned nobility. And we, we're peasant scum. And they're terrified of us. These people have been through college. They're all educated. They've, even if history wasn't their main subject, they've they've gotten the broad strokes of how things have gone. Uh, and they know that there's like old angry spirits within the, the heart of the common population at the bottom of the pyramid, uh, you know, that, uh, that seethes uh, at the people at the top for a variety of reasons. Some of it's resentment, some of it's certainly jealousy, some of it's a uh, uh, sense of injustice because someone has something that you don't have and all that kind of stuff. But... It's also because of how we're treated and how uh, we're not really able to uh, properly fight back anymore. That uh, we've built up a world that's so codified with laws and enforcement and policy and, and increasingly with corporations using their internal policies to supersede national laws wherever they are because well it doesn't matter what it says here our policy says and so if you want to use our website yada 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 which is just a way of backdoor effectively making your own law especially if you have a website that's like a critical point of failure for whatever it's you know offering uh people don't like that uh, uh it's it's being in a gilded cage kind of prison, you know, we're all well fed, we got plenty of bread and circuses, so to say. Uh, but uh, on some level, we, we know we're being lied to and being told uh, things that aren't true, but uh, some people can't even articulate it anymore. Uh, we've been so inundated with messaging about how they're right and we're wrong, and they're just doing this for our good, and we're wrong for questioning. In fact, people who question it, they're bad people. They're up to something. They're, they're, they're out against the other people. They're not against us at the top. They're actually against the rest of you down there in the bottom. You guys, you all better, better start fighting each other before this takes over. The old divide and conquer technique. The people at Wizards of the Coast are not stewards of role-playing games, or specifically at Dungeons and Dragons. You can't even really say they're the people who own Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons as a brand is owned by a brand that is a self-floating entity known as a corporation with the name of Hasbro that doesn't have any singular ownership. There's no one person you can trace this down to anymore. I'm sure whoever founded Hasbro and they originally had control of their company, but they're long since gone. 
uh, it's an entity. And so the people who are calling them stewards are merely employees of a company that owns something. Uh, the High King of Dungeons and Dragons door didn't appoint them to be stewards of the land until their return. Uh, they're, they're using flowery language to, to both make it seem like what they're doing is, is, is more noble than what it is, but also kind of like on, a, on another flip side, the fact that that's where they decide to go with how they want to present themselves. Stewards. They're stewards of this grand, noble tradition. Hmm. Uh, like I said, the, 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 the merchant aristocracy is uh, increasingly uh, getting some heirs about uh, who they f feel their position in life is and how they relate to the rest of us. The fact that their own customer base would be deemed to be obstacles to get money that they have a right to. They have a right to this monetization. They have a right to your money. And how dare you try to stop them? As soon as they came up with the scheme to make billions of dollars selling people $30 a month subscription fees to go play on a virtual tabletop game, then they had a right to that money because they thought about how they could get that money. They now have a right to it, and you're interfering with that. They told their investors they were going to get this money if they gave them some money to help you know, with the startup costs and the R&D. And you're interfering with their right to get what's rightfully their money, not your money. Hmm. Just weird. Something to think about. Anytime a politician or someone in a major company uses certain language, uh, you know, about, especially like around some sort of moral circumstance how like they're in a good light and that you know they're they're abusing their customers to protect their customers from other customers uh or you know they're abusing their own voters to protect their voters from other voters or you know however you want to look at it uh little red flags should be going up in your heads and hopefully from now on those of you in the dnd community who've been kind of forcibly uh been confronted uh, with this sort of stuff over the last few weeks Maybe in the future, when you see this in other realms of life, uh, you, you might kind of notice, like, wait a minute, that's what those guys did. I wonder what they really have going on. Are these guys really the, the grand and noble thing they're saying of themselves, or are they just people working for a free-floating institution that just happens to have bought something? Dungeons & Dragons only exists with the people who actually play it and run it and it's great that its popularity is spreading and that more people are interested in the hobby shoving that hobby onto the internet has n never been a good idea and i've long felt that the slow trend towards using the internet to play games has uh has put us on a trajectory that will you know continue to further video gamify the genre and we're about to see uh, that manifest in uh, quite a literal form with what uh, Dungeons and Dragons is planning to do with itself. Uh, and it sounds horrible. Absolutely horrible. But, you know, all they need is a million suckers to pay that 30 bucks. And they'll be raking in the cash. So, are you going to be a sucker? I guess we'll find out. Stay waspinated.